Welcome back to another Redfall video, everyone. Shortly after the gameplay trailer was released at the Xbox and Bethesda Showcase, new info about the game surfaced from both official articles by Bethesda and interviews conducted with the studio director and co-creative director on Redfall, Harvey Smith. The information that has been revealed tells us a lot more about what to expect from Redfall in many different aspects, from the differences between solo players play and co-op, campaign progression, the characters and weapons, the open world design and systemic gameplay opportunities, and much much more. So without further introduction, let's get started with how playing solo will function. Starting with solo play, Arcane Studios wanted to make this a priority during the development of Redfall so that even if you don't want to partake in co-op, you can still experience the game the same way you've experienced Arcane prior games like Dishonored, Prey, and Deathloop. Arcane has always been known for crafting narrative-driven, single-player campaigns that allow players unprecedented levels of agency, and Redfall is carrying on that tradition. While this is Arcane's first co-op experience, you can also play through the entire game on your own. A huge emphasis for Redfall has been the solo experience in keeping with Arcane's passions, says co-creative and studio director Harvey Smith. All the games we've made overlap in a bunch of creative ways, though no two are exactly alike. Redfall is an open world game, but it can be soloed with any of the heroes. The pace becomes more exploratory, you can use recon and stealth to gather info on encounters and avoid enemies or get the drop on them. We put an inordinate amount of work into making the single player feel right, says Harvey Smith, studio director at Arcane Austin. With no desire to make solo and multiplayer Player's separate modes, Smith and his colleagues set about creating a game that worked as a satisfying single-player game just as much as it did a great co-op experience. It was very important to us that we allow you to play the game alone, says Smith, so you can pick your way along very slowly, play at your own pace, observe things at a distance, plan, formulate, harvest resources, do all those things that you probably like doing in an arcane game. The biggest takeaway here is that you are completely alone during solo play with no bot AI teammates to join you during the course of the campaign. This makes Redfall diverge strongly from another game that it has been commonly compared to, Left 4 Dead, and more in line with a game like Borderlands. I don't know about you, but of those two franchises, I'm happier that Redfall is more like Borderlands personally. And if Redfall is even more replayable and addictive than the Borderlands games have been, I am going to be sinking an ungodly amount of time into this game when it launches next year. Another important aspect of Redfall, specifically in regards to the co-op play, is the character and campaign progression, and how exactly that will carry over from a co-op game session to a solo session, or rather how progression won't carry over, as sadly it's been confirmed that only the host player keeps their campaign mission progression intact while the co-op players joining the host session only keep their XP and loot that they have gained. Once the co-op players leave and return to their own game sessions, they will have to redo missions they already completed while playing in co-op. Um, does progress save for each person who joins the game? So like, is it tied mostly to one person's game where it was like, oh, I only want to play the next chapter with you. Can I just like hop in and then go back and play the next chapter by myself after that? Our current answer is whoever hosts the session, mm -hmm. uh, initiates the session, their progress is persistent for them, uh, but other people, it's not, right? Okay. Your, your character progress is. Like any weapons you find, any levels you gain, all of that are, is persistent. But in terms of what missions you've unlocked and such, the host, their progression matters. Okay. If you, if you sign on with your friend and they're halfway through the game and you play the second half of the game with them and then you need to go back and you know you want to play on your own, you'll be starting at the beginning of the campaign with a character. Okay. Like when we started talking about that and working on it, mm -hmm. we imagined a scenario where every mission you played, we, we checkbox that you got credit for that. Like you, you've done that one. But then you end up with this weird problem where like, okay, but I'm going to start I've been playing with you, but now I'm gonna play on my own. Mm -hmm. So I start playing through the campaign, 
but then I start hitting missions that I've already done. Mm -hmm. So I've been so for the flow of things, you want to have to redo those. Right. Yeah, the story would be very confusing if if you got to a st um, mission eight and it said skip this one because you've already done it or whatever, right? So mm -hmm. we just decided to like, you know, your hero and your gear and your experience points, that stuff is always persistent, but your mission flow is persistent if you're the host. Harvey's explanation here actually makes a lot of sense if you think about it. Redfall is ultimately going to be a narrative-driven game, much like Arkane's previous work, so the story will be a huge focus once we actually get our hands on the game. Understandably though, people have not been happy about this decision, and the displeasure has been voiced across social media in one form or another. I see where everyone is coming from when they want to have their progression from the campaign carry over from co-op. Harvey even said that they tried to make this system work behind the scenes, where if you complete a mission in co-op and go back to your solo game, that mission is already registered as finished in the mission log. The story is so important though to an Arcane Studios game that they made the decision to limit the campaign progression to the host player in order to avoid any confusion or misunderstanding of the events of Redfall's narrative, and I do agree with this decision by and large. Besides, this this gives us an excuse as players to experience the game with all four characters and their different abilities, which lends itself nicely to replay value, in my opinion. In relation to the co-op play, if you choose to play solo, you'll be missing out on the dialogue interactions between the four characters, which will give the story and moment-to-moment -moment gameplay of Redfall just a little bit more flavor. By ensuring that abilities are complementary rather than reliant on each other, it means there's there's no pressure for a group to have specific characters in their party. All four players can choose to play as Layla if they wanted to, confirms co-creative director Ricardo Bear, although he notes that this means such a group would miss out on all the dynamic conversation that happens between a properly mixed party. This confirms that a party of four players, if they really wanted to, could play as the same character. You'd miss out on some of the dialogue and cool ability synergizing that happens happens with a diverse and strategically organized team, but Arcane is all about player freedom, so if you want to have four Laylas, Jacobs, Remy's, or Devenders taking on the vampires, you can absolutely do that. In the IGN Summer Games Fest interview, Harvey Smith also mentions that characters have a wide variety of skills to choose from, alongside three primary active abilities that you can use during gameplay. An even more interesting wrinkle that Harvey mentions here that I haven't seen anyone discuss is the fact that as of now, there is no skill respec system in place, which essentially means that the skills you choose during the game, you are locked into those choices you've made, and you will have to play through the game again to try a different path. Can we change characters after we started the game? <laughs> no, you cannot. Okay. You start the campaign with Layla, for instance, you're bound to Layla through the campaign missions, side missions, the whole flow of the game to the end game. And then after that, you can play again with Layla and keep advancing her, or you can start a new character or whatever, but you can't switch characters mid-track. And uh, and currently we have no plans to respec either. Okay. Like, you know, we you can start a new playthrough and try a different set of powers, different set of weapons, etc. but like, um, currently when you start, a, start the campaign with a character, you're committed all the way through. How flexible are the character builds? Like speaking of not being able to respect, like is there a specific class type per character? I did see on one of the weapons, if you paused it during the trailer today, that says like support value on a weapon. Like what does that mean and how yeah. does that Im impact how we play? Uh, every hero is made up of a bunch of choices you can make through the trees. They all have three primary uh, active powers that you can upgrade in a bunch of different ways. And then they have some passive powers. Mm. Um, and then there are a set of skills that are kind of common across all the characters, like can I carry more medical resources mm -hmm. or more la lockpicks or whatever. In Devinder's case, there are, he has a power called Black Light, uh, which you saw used where he held it up and the UV light went out and petrified all the vampires around, which is temporary. They start to thaw out basically, but you can stake them while they're petrified. Mm -hmm. And there are hazards in the world, like where somebody set up a tripod with some UV light and if a vampire moves through it dynamically, they get petrified. So you can sneak up and turn it off because 
let's say an enemy faction is like walking around those petrified vampires or whatever, you can use that to your advantage. But he has a power actively where he goes, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you shall not pass. Or shall whatever. not pass! Uh, and you can upgrade that different ways. Bigger radius, longer effect, okay. uh, et cetera. He explicitly mentions one of the active abilities for Devinder called Blacklight, which is the modified electrical stake that he slams into the ground in this shot in the gameplay trailer, and it petrifies all vampires within a certain nearby radius. That area of effect also seemingly can be upgraded and modified, which allows for this particular ability to be even more powerful and a perfect means of crowd control in a co-op or solo game session. The idea of a no respec feature is one omission from the game that I actually disagree with. Sure, it hurts the replay value a bit if someone doesn't want to go back and play through the game again just to pick different skills and experience it differently, but I'd argue that giving us as players the ability to change our skill tree assignments how we see fit adds even more freedom to the experience, and Arcane is all about freedom. So all I will say if anyone at Arcane Austin is watching this, at least maybe reconsider putting the respec system into Redfall, please? Redfall will also feature a large variety of standard modern firearms in addition to more over-the-top weaponry like the UV beam or the stake launcher. All of these weapons come in different rarities which will increase the weapon's base stats and add modifiers along the way. Our weapons are an interesting twist on the genre, says production director Ben Horn. We have loadout options players already know and love, like rare shotguns and sniper rifles, all with randomized weapon traits to make each drop feel like one of an endless potential of combinations. In addition to that, some of our weapons are unique vampire hunting weapons, like the stake launcher or UV beam that can be used tactically to eliminate the vampire threat. One of these weapon modifiers you can find in the open world are objects known as remnants, which imbue the player's gear with very unique gameplay tweaks. Harvey Smith elaborates on this in the IGN Summer Games Fest interview. And then also the weapons you choose because your weapons are leveled so you need a, a, a higher level weapon. Mm. And then the weapons come with rarities so they have all these different traits on them that affect gameplay. And then on top of that you have a few other equipment items that affect gameplay. We have the concept of these things called remnants. Mm -hmm. which are like objects the vampires were around uh, when, say, one of them becomes a vampire and, like, the world warps around them psychically. It will imbue something like the rabbit's foot on their keychain or, okay. you know, uh, some object they're, they're carrying can be a remnant now psychically charged, and you can find those and carry them and they modify gameplay in some way. They're basically yeah. magic items. Okay, awesome. One of Redfall's most important components is the open world. Arcane Austin want to give the players more freedom to explore, while also not straying too far away from their signature level design that have made them an industry powerhouse. Funnily enough, during the course of development, the game was actually too open at one point in time. How open is the open world? I think that's always a question. So like with Breath of the Wild, you could actually go anywhere. But with similar things, it's like, no, this is very heavy blocked. You cannot go past this part until you've done X, Y, Z. It's mostly very open. In fact, at first it was too open. It was kind of like there's not, there was not enough blocking you or channeling you, but it's very, very open rooftops and alleys and streets of this small town, Redfall, Massachusetts, which is like a, you know, fishing community, a tourist community, quaint, historic New England stuff. Mm -hmm with this stealthy, you know, takeover by vampires, right? But the one thing that we do in terms of that gating uh, pretty heavily is we divided the world into two districts. Okay. So District 1 is the first half of the missions, and it's the downtown part of Redfall, and District 2 is more rural. It's farms, lighthouses, churches, things like that. The wonderful thing about going open world is that players have the flexibility to poke around at different things at their own pace, adds creative director Ricardo Bear. If a particular vampire fight feels too tough, you can always go tackle a nest or do a favor for one of your fellow Redfall survivors to level up or earn some new gear, then come back to that nasty vampire fight. We've always tried to be 
fairly non-judgmental about the different approaches, Smith said. Missions that are very bespoke, with wide linear paths to a location, are obviously very strong, and that's what we did with the Dishonored games. A game where there's only really one big mission in one big space, like Prey, that's also a strong approach. The open world gives you new strengths, so we were excited about that risk. We're excited about the creative strengths that an open world offers. Arcane is striving to apply that same level of care and attention to detail to an open world as they have with any of their previous games, and based on what has been said by both Harvey Smith and Ricardo Bear, I believe we have very little to worry about in regards to how fleshed out this world will actually be. Stealth in Redfall will not be as crucial to success as it was in, say, the Dishonored series, but it will certainly give more cunning players an advantage over the opposition. Redfall is a game where stealth can be used to get the drop on an enemy, reach a good vantage, or avoid a combat encounter altogether, says Smith. It's not a pure stealth game, but a stealth-enabling shooter. We love that because having AI with simulated hearing and sight always leads to interesting, dynamic gameplay moments. Creeping up on enemies, avoiding notice, using the right weapons and damage types, choosing when to employ your crazy powers, knowing when to break off combat and stake a vampire that's been petrified by UV light, all of that is part of Redfall's tactically expressive gameplay. Stealth is important to this game, but this is not a stealth game, says Smith. Rather than Redfall demanding quiet, surgical strikes against unaware targets, stealth is a tool to aid in the exploration of Arcane's first urban open world. A vital part of making this work is enemy AI. Legions of vampires won't inexplicably descend upon you just because you entered their patrol bubble. What works for us is hearing, sight, distance, view cones, and all that nerdy stuff that we love, says Smith. Because it means as I move my way, as I go across a parking lot, scale a little wall across the road, and make my way onto the roof of a building to rewire the antenna for this little side mission that I've got going on, I'm triangulating. Along the way, stealth is useful for that. It helps you avoid encounters so you can get to where you intend to go. While exploring the open world of Redfall, many activities and side quests will present themselves to you, allowing for even more gameplay experiences outside of strictly the main story. There's a whole wide open world to see in Redfall, with new mysteries and threats in every nook and cranny. From cultist strongholds and twisted psychic spaces called nests, you'll find plenty of danger on the island of Redfall. It'll take a lot of work to make Redfall completely safe again, but as creative director Ricardo Bear explains, when not doing the main story missions, players can help Redfall by taking neighborhoods back from the vampires and the cultists who worship them. You can chip away a bit at a time, making parts of the world a little more comfortable for the citizens of Redfall, just trying to survive the vampire apocalypse. We deliberately chose community houses, Smith adds. The first one is a firehouse. A special mission allows you to liberate a community, making that area a little safer to navigate. Taking territories also brings ramifications, but Smith and Bear wouldn't reveal what they are. Another open world activity spoken about by the Arcane team are the vampire nests, which appear dynamically and buff nearby vampires within a certain radius. They can even appear during a main campaign mission, as described by Ricardo Bear. Systems that are part of the open world can crash into campaign missions and interfere with them in a way that we haven't done in the past before, explains Bear. His example is a dynamic world event known as a vampire nest, which drops a psychic door into an area that supercharges all enemies in a radius around it. While this is an optional activity separate from the main campaign, the way it affects the world can impact your main mission objective. Harvey also elaborates on the vampire nests in his interview with IGN during the Summer Games Fest. Is the door shown in the trailer a psychic nest? As you guessed, we have a feature called nests, which are kind of a shared psychic space where the vampires are basically sort of like tripping together on what we call the blood trance. Oh. And different rules exist inside the nest that psychic space doesn't have to adhere to uh, normal, you know, architectural boundaries. 
Uh, that's why in the trailer you see them go into a movie theater and instead of the screen, it transitions into this like wilderness looking uh, environment or whatever. But yes, that's a nest. Yeah. Okay. Are they replayable and are they required? You know, they're not required per se, uh, but when you get to the center of a nest uh, and there's a heart there that has a, a powerful psychic remnant in it that is that you want, oh. basically. Uh, and so they're replayable, they're fairly procedural. Um, those nests are made of room by room, different tiles that can be stitched together dynamically. Mm. And so it's one of the more procedural parts of the game. In creating the world of Redfall, Arcane set out to create a place that felt more true to life than anything they've ever created before. A place that you might see in typical small town America. What if instead of a fantasy land, it was a real place you might have visited, Bear recalled, going back to the original discussions the team had shortly after Prey launched in 2007. Like a seaside resort town in New England with liquor stores and a dumpster in the alley and wires over the street and a historic museum, what if we turned Arcane's powerful art and narrative focus on that? We love small, well-detailed towns. The familiarity of corner stores, bars, baseball fields, says studio director Harvey Smith. What if we located something extraordinary there, enhanced by the powerful impact of regular people living their lives? What if you could sift through all that detail, exploring this new place, so much like where you live, and yet so different, and come to feel like the island of Redfall is a real place in Massachusetts. We like to shake it up, so each game carries most of the same core values, but also changes a few significant elements. Arcane has always been passionate about ensuring their settings aren't just backdrops. The world around you is constantly telling stories, and these stories can be enjoyed no matter how many people are playing the game. Whether you want to explore at your own pace or share your journey with friends. The setting is narrative rich with lots of environmental storytelling, says Smith. You learn a lot about the lives of the people who live or lived there. Our lore is important as a part of how we get under the player's skin. Searching an abandoned house with a flashlight, learning about what occurred there, looking for resources, avoiding dormant vampires, all of that is critical to the experience. The AI is very much cat and mouse with perceptions based on sight and sound awareness, and you can choose between single player and co-op with up to four people, which gets more social and faster paced. Lastly, the lovely folks at Arcane Austin gave us some new info about their initial concepts and ideas about the titular vampires. Vampires are such a cool and fun monster to play with, says business director Susan Kath. Since vampires have existed for millennia in folklore worldwide, everyone has some idea of what a vampire is and assumptions about what that means. Traditional vampires are the monsters inhabiting our childhood closets, the dark shadow sliding by on the path behind us at night, the evil we imagined lurking behind the windows of the abandoned mansion on the hill. The vampires of Redfall play into some of those assumptions, but by no means all, bringing a modern take on the folklore that is uniquely arcane. Our vampires are not some aspirational fantasy, says Smith. They're predatory monsters who feed on the vulnerable to make themselves more powerful. The vampires of Redfall have pushed the water away from the island and blocked out the sun, turning the once peaceful town into their own personal playground. Created by science experiments gone horribly wrong, or horribly right if you're one of the vampires, and gifted with powerful psychic abilities, Redfall's vampires aren't like anything you've ever seen before. Interestingly, when asked by Tamur Hussein and Lucy James of GameSpot for their own video interview about the game, Harvey Smith had this to say about the game's themes and what sort of message it's trying to send to the player. He gives a very insightful and thoughtful answer here. Uh, well, going back to the stuff about like the narrative and you mentioned themes and um, maybe abuse of power and that kind of stuff, what is the theme for Redfall then? Yeah, so um, Ricardo Bear uh, worked with our narrative team internally uh, Evan Narcisse worked on the game. We have a group of people internally that work with Ricardo. Um, the writing was divided between all of them. 
Uh, but we knew up front that w what we wanted was uh, certain thematic elements, right? Like vampires are a metaphor, like monsters are a metaphor. And our vampires kind of represent like a tiny, tiny percentage of people, like the 0.01% who have everything. And they have it by preying on everyone else and just draining the life out of everyone else as the world burns down around us, right? Um, and so that's kind of where we started. The, the people who, they were already vampires, um, you know, before, before even becoming vampires. At some level, they already lack humanity, lack empathy um, for the, the people around them. They come in and they destroy communities. They hollow them out from the inside. Um, and so there, there are a lot of themes related to those things. There are a lot of themes related to community. Like we have this whole game system called Take Back Redfall where you capture neighborhoods one at a time and make them safer by doing some uh, safe house missions, finding a safe house, doing some safe house missions, taking down an underboss who's kind of a bootlicker to the vampire gods and securing that neighborhood. Um, and your missions are launched out of like bases that are effectively civic centers. Like the first one is a fire department, right? So somewhere down there, there's this concept of like people, neighbors need to come together. We all live in this community um, let's band together, let's feed the hungry, let's, let's help the vulnerable, and, and let's fight back against these predators. And those themes are kind of like, they're subtle, they're not, it's not in your face, but that's, I think that's what, you know, it's really not for me to say, it's, it's really when the game comes out for you to say, actually, but like, that's, that's what I would take, would like you to take away from it. And there you have it, folks, some even more interesting nuggets of information that I was able to dig out from the Redfall interviews and articles released. But now I want to know what you think in the comments down below. Has any of the info I've shared made you more excited for Redfall? Are you unimpressed by what the team at Arcane Austin had to say? Let's start some positive and constructive discussion around Redfall. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like on the video and share it around with other members of the Bethesda and Arcane community. It really helps out. Consider subscribing to the channel for more Redfall content like this, and be sure to hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. And remember that the outsider walks among us. Thanks for watching, everyone.